My name is Dr. Ramona Bishop. I'm the Associate Superintendent of Curriculum and Academic Achievement for Pre-K through Adult. I think there's a resilience that our children develop that, um, and perhaps it, it may be a resilience and they also put barriers up around their emotions sometimes. So you may, you know, get an answer from them that um, you might not want to hear or you may get absolutely no answer because they've learned to cope in this setting in different ways. Um, I believe that some of the acting out behaviors that we see in the classroom are a result of uh, their resilience. You know, they've built these walls around their emotions because of some of the things that occur. Many of them have really stable, nice home lives. You know, so we can't assume that because they're here, they don't have mom and dad in the home or whatever it is. But some don't, and some have a real hard time at home. Um, some have, go home to families where there's drugs in the home. I know that for sure. Um, some of them go home to nobody. Um, some of them have been in many foster care situations. I just met a young lady just before I got here that has been in 12 different foster care um, situations in her school career. Can you imagine? Um, and she's only going into the, she's going into the seventh grade. I taught in East Oakland, which is very much like this community. Some people feel it's different. It's actually very much, very similar. Um, and I had a class, I had one class that I looped fourth to summer to fifth grade. So I got to know them very well. And there's two stories that come to mind, if you don't mind. One is a female, one is a male. Um, the female I ended up having in my house a lot. I cared very much about her. The reason I had her with me a lot is because home was not necessarily a good place to be. Um, not because people didn't care about her, but because her mom worked nights. And I'm not sure what her mom did at night, I can imagine. Um, but her mom worked lots of nights. So the children were left to their own devices and, um, and unfortunately many of them started to fall to selling drugs, doing drugs, um, being in violent gangs, all that type of thing. And I was trying to save her from that situation. Um, this young lady then became um, she actually was a serious entrepreneur. She could sell you anything. So she connected with a group of folks that's, you know, the, the kids that walk up to you and sell candy, you know, in the um, neighborhood. She was one of those. And she started doing well for herself, making her own money, doing her thing. Um, but that was at a very young age. She was only in the uh, sixth grade, I believe, at that time. So she was actually supporting herself at that time. I still continued to have a connection with her until she somehow left my view, and I'm not sure how we disconnected. When I saw her again, she told me that she, I think she was in the um, maybe 11th grade. Um, she was having her first baby. Um, I saw her again. She had had her second baby. When I asked her, where are you staying? She said she was staying with her boyfriend. What is your boyfriend about? He's a drug dealer. OK, so when are you getting out? I'm not. I love him. Okay, so the last time I saw her, I had gone down there. I was on um, International Boulevard. It used to be called East 14th. And I was just driving down, and I saw her. And um, she, I, I pulled over and got out of the car. Um, she recognized me, but she had, she had succumbed to crack cocaine. Um, it was all over her. You know, you get the visual of the person that's on crack. I said, where are you going? She was going to the store. I watched her go into a store and then come out and proceed down the street. But basically, I kind of said bye to my baby. Um, and I tried hard um, <laughs> to save her, but uh, she's gone. She's gone. Um, I have another one. Um, <laughs> that's why what Freedom Hall does is so important, because they follow our children. So I lost track of her because I was in the elementary school. And then she went to this junior high setting where it can be all, it can be strange. You have all these different teachers. It's very overwhelming for you. And especially if your home life is as overwhelming as hers was. And um, so that's why what they do is so important. They track kids. And perhaps if there was a program like this for her, you know, she may have gone to college because she was very bright, very bright. But the, 
it, there's that transition point and our children just need somebody to connect to. That's again why for me, um, programs that mentor people who care, like Mr. Koybian, are very, very important. And the more I told him, whatever I can do to support, whether it be come and speak to a young group of girls or speak to young boys about how to deal with a group, to deal with the girls, deal with these feelings that they may be having for the young girls, um, I'm willing to do it because it's just so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There have been so many divides in our country. And so our children need to experience people from all backgrounds. That is so important, more so than just on television or whatever. They need to have experiences of learning to live with people of all different backgrounds. Because when they go into the workplace, they're going to be exposed to people from all different backgrounds. And think 10 years from now, you know, they're going to need to be able to interact globally you know, with all different people, all different languages, all different backgrounds. So I think it is so important. And even, you know, as an African-American administrator, my white students, oh my God, you know, they would just say, you are just so, you're like different. You know, <laughs> they, was, they, they needed to see that there are people that break down those stereotypes that we have, that we all have. We all have what, things that we think about each other that are not necessarily what's the truth. So we need to break down those walls and really start to engage with each other. And I think that is so very important. Um, so I would say whoever is available to come be with our children, doesn't matter what the background, where you come from, anything. They just want somebody to care about them and it's gonna help our world be a better place, I think. I just know that Freedom Hall is doing the work that we should all be doing that they are working individually with children that need them the most. Mm -hmm. And um, I've seen the evidence, that young man that I spoke about, the 1.0 to the 4.0, won a writing contest this year. His self-esteem is just off the chart as compared to what it had been. And so this work is so important to our future, critical to our future, and Freedom Hall is on the cutting edge. And if there be Freedom Halls across this nation, I believe that we can change the world, certainly. I know that the superintendent is very interested in building Freedom Hall across the school district. He early identified that Freedom Hall was a model program, and so we would love to grow, um, not too fast, because again, that consistency is so important, but certainly plant other Freedom Halls across this large school district that we have. But I was just talking to somebody about my father and how important he was to me, so I can't imagine a home, my home, without my father. If it weren't for my father, I'm not sure I would be who I am today. Uh, he was a role model for me on how to be a corporate person, how to interact with others, how to earn friends, how to influence others, how to be in the world, how to be a success. So I can't imagine I'm growing out without that father figure, and I'm a female, so it's even more critical to have our fathers with our young men. And I think those fathers can come from, again, any background, any place. I think there are many great role models and mentors right here in the community that could stand up and help us do this work. So my girls are a year apart, as you heard. And when they were six months and 18 months, I decided to leave their father. And so I experienced being a single mother and a teacher for about a year and a half, almost two years, I was alone with my girls. Thank God for my mother and my sister. Um, what a life. Wow. Uh, I had two babies, and my whole existence when I got home was being with them, caring for them. There was no downtime, none for two years. And some of these ladies have done it for 16, 17, 20 years of raising children on their own. I, I take my hat off to them. And I say, whatever we can do to support them, we should do it. Because I lived it, and it is not easy.